Well, hello and welcome to the final regular, at least, episode of Chelsea Clearly. And I don't really know how it's happened. I don't know how we've got here, but it's the final game of the Premier League season. And despite everything we've done in the last few episodes, we actually have a chance to win the league. Yes, at the end of a really brilliant season, which has included months like March, where we won every single game, to months like April, where we have just been completely and utterly terrible in every single way. Somehow, despite all of our best efforts, last time out, the draw against Man United in the league, being knocked out of the Champions League, defeat to Liverpool before that in the league, defeat to West Ham, and the draw with West Brom and Wolves as well, somehow we actually do still have a chance. So how has this Christmas miracle happened? Well, we started things off with a 4-0 win against Tottenham Hotspur, two from Ziyech, two from Haaland. Our next game was against Bristol City. We left it a bit late, but it was a 1-0 win, goal from Callum Hudson-Odoi. And then the one that could potentially cost us, we drew 3-3 with Everton. We took the lead three times through Haaland and two from Ziyech, and three times relatively soon after we scored, they equalised. Nothing happened. After the 54th minute, we should be disappointed it's two points dropped. But then, the penultimate game of the season, we played Leicester. And again, we left it late, but we won 1-0. Tammy Abraham with the goal. So three wins and a draw from those league games. The remaining games in hand until the final round of fixtures. I mean, that's good, right? But we needed other teams to help us out. We needed other teams to drop points. And that is exactly what has happened. Now, obviously, we saw in the last episode... Liverpool dropped four points by drawing with Southampton and West Brom. And then, well, they beat Wolves, which was unfortunate for us. But then they played Manchester United and they lost by two goals to nil. It's a result that has denied them securing the title already. And it's a result which could help us to leapfrog them if things go our way. Manchester United, meanwhile... Well, their form's pretty good. They're in the Champions League final, of course, as well as the FA Cup final. A treble may be on for them. You can see they've been in excellent form. And, uh, well, the result against Liverpool really helped them to actually be within a chance of winning the league for themselves. If they won their games in hand, their remaining matches, they would actually finish above us and potentially finish above Liverpool. Except they didn't win all of their games in hand. Yes, while we were beating Leicester... They could only manage a draw with Bournemouth. They took the lead in the 8th minute through Anthony Martial. And then in the 89th minute, who else but Sergio Blumin Aguero equalised for Bournemouth to probably deny Man United the title. And so this is the situation that we are left with, with one game left to play. Liverpool are in the box seat. They are top of the table, 89 points. They need to win their final game. A draw will almost certainly be enough. But if they lose, then they could potentially lose the crown that they've had for three years in a row. We have clawed ourselves to within two points of them, 87 points. Whatever happens in the final game, it is more points than we've had in either of the previous two seasons. More wins at 27 than either of the previous two seasons. It's, is it going to be enough? It might not be enough. We've done really well. Obviously, the last few episodes have been not enjoyable experiences but we've we, you know we, we've tried we've tried and we can't have done any more given the situation we found ourselves in we have a chance today Manchester United are on 86 points so the chance of them winning the league especially with their goal difference is virtually gone they would require a massive goal swing and both us and Liverpool losing in order to do it now let's assess the chances Man United they're probably out of it they are playing Brentford away from home but this is why I'm moderately optimistic because Liverpool they're playing at Anfield but they are playing Tottenham who are in fifth place and are a pretty decent footballing side if they can't win that game and certainly if they lose we have a big chance because we are playing bottom of the league already relegated Cardiff City at home now in some ways that fills me with nothing but terror because you've played this game before you know how that might go but I'm I'm optimistic we should be getting three points. So put simply, if Liverpool lose to Spurs and we beat Cardiff, we will be champions. We can do it if Liverpool draw with Spurs, but we would need to beat Cardiff 8-0, which is possible, but maybe not likely. So I would say we don't have a particularly strong chance, 
probably 20%. It, the odds are definitely in Liverpool's favour, but we do we do have some chance and we're going to see what we can do. I'm slightly concerned that I think the last league game that we actually won in an episode was when we beat Everton back on the 8th of February. I, I think that's right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the, yeah, the, the only game that we've actually won in an episode since then was the 3-1 win against Bayern Munich. Every every other game since then that we have played in an episode, we have lost or drawn. So I'm hopeful. I am hopeful. And if that wasn't exciting enough, we've got the FA Cup final against Man United to come after that, a bumper episode. But it was just going to be that. But we do now have a chance to win the league. It's a final day drama. Can we? Can we do it? Can we do it? I don't know. Make sure you subscribe and drop a like as well and enjoy the fact that we've somehow clawed our way back to this. Now, how have we managed to do it? Well, nothing to do with the tactics. They're still the same. It's really kind of been an issue of personnel. A lot of players who've been playing absolutely dreadfully have been dropped. Depay has been out of the side. Orsolini has been out of the side. Uh, Havertz has been absolutely dreadful, so he's gone. Tenali, of course, as well. Ben Chilwell is probably the surprising one. He's been dropped. Emerson's come in and done very well. And, of course, Reese James has come back from injury, so Aspel Equator is out of here as well. And so I want to keep the same team. Unfortunately, Callum Hudson-Odoi has an injury he's got a pulled groin and he's going to be out for one more day which i don't want to risk so we are going to be playing memphis to pie instead kovacic is also lacking quite a bit of fitness i just i don't i don't want to risk denali given how absolutely horrendously volatile he's been recently right we're going with this can they be heroes we we need to win that's all we have control over that's all we can do is make sure we win. Then at least we'll finish second. At least we'll finish with... We'll get 90 points if we win the game, which is really good. But we need a big favour from Tottenham. They're not the team we'd really be hoping to ask for a favour. But all we can do, all we can do is win this game and just hope, hope that we get some luck from Spurs. And if they somehow manage to get a draw with Liverpool, then we need to win this game by a big margin. We, If we win 8-0... That'll be brilliant. We'll keep the latest scores up there. Keep an eye on what happens at Anfield. Of course, we need to make sure we do actually win this game. That's the most important thing. Cardiff have nothing to play for. We are at home. Um, they're already out of the league. They're the worst team in the league. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to make it extremely difficult for ourselves and probably lose. Bastoni, with a incredibly confusing header that somehow went backwards. Let's let's just not do anything stupid, shall we? Let's just. Let's just, you know, rack up a nice, strong scoreline to give ourselves a chance. Depay racing into some space. They're really staying off him. He's he's in today because of uh, hudson Odoi's injury, and he's not really impressed me with his finish. I mean, Cardiff, it's safe to say they're up for this. They can uh, they can deny us the title here, and they're, they're very keen on that. But Mason Mount has stolen the ball from a loose pass. He's now running forwards a bit more centrally. Finds Depay on the left. Needs to see a big performance from him if he's going to start the cup final. He's trying but it's not working. Dominating possession early on here, but still no goal. I'd like a goal that would really settle the nerves, and this might be one. Ziyech has been flattened, and I think that's pretty much stone wall. And uh, yep, uh, unsurprisingly, that has been given Big Earl to step up and uh, settle some nerves here, and he's done just that. You would expect nothing else from him when you paid 100 million for him. 30th of the season for Erling Haaland pretty good return okay Liverpool still being held by Spurs and uh, Man United now winning their game so now we're winning this one we've gone back up to second we would be oh yeah we we would lose the league on goal difference wouldn't we that's kind of not really sunk in if <laughs> if Liverpool draw we would lose the league on goal difference which oh I don't know I really don't know Kovacic to Ziyech we need to score goals Haaland is in 2-0 he, he knows. He knows. If we win this 8-0 and it stays the same at Anfield, we win. I think, I mean, do we, I mean, we might go attacking. Depend, depending on how realistic a prospect it is, we might go attacking. We seem to be doing quite well so far without. Great finish from Harlan. He's 31st of the season. He is well up for this. Uh, well, Liverpool have taken the lead at Anfield. Gabriel Barbosa, one of our main enemies in the save, has given them the lead, which, yep, I mean, that kind of makes what we do irrelevant doesn't it but um hopefully spurs can 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 come back into that one hopefully they got a bit of fight about them 
I don't think they can still qualify for the Champions League. I mean, if they if they still got that on the table, then they might be a bit more up for it. But all we can do is just keep on scoring. Mason Mount makes it three. Very good. Imagine if we actually do win 8-0 and then Liverpool also managed to win. Like, if we did literally everything we could and we just lose because Liverpool won. Right, it's not coming through quickly. Spurs equalised through, through Belotti and then Liverpool have immediately retaken the lead through uh, Menino. Um, so Liverpool did did uh, lose out. They Spurs equalised, but then they've come straight back. We're doing brilliantly. 3-0. Lovely stuff. Just want to check the league table. Spurs, Spurs can't qualify for the Champions League. They can't overtake Man City. So they actually have nothing to play for but denying Liverpool the title and giving it to one of their closest rivals, which isn't really in their interest, but I really appreciate it. I mean, it's not looking likely. Liverpool are 3-1 up now, so it was... There was there for a bit, but it seems to be over now. 4-1. Four, 4-1. Four, one, four, one. Uh, Menino's got a hat-trick, so that's that's definitely over. But, I mean, we, we gave it a fight. We, we did give it a fight. If we'd have just beaten West Brom and beaten West Ham, or even just held out for a draw with West Ham, actually, then we'd at least be, well, we'd be level with them. The, I mean, the Wolves game as well. We've dropped some stupid points in April as Depay makes it 4-0. Some very dumb performances in April, which just, frankly, given how well we've done now in May, were just inexplicable. I, I don't know why. I think I said last time it was mostly... It was a case of players being exhausted, players being burnt out. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know, but it's just... So frustrating because this was right there and we could have had it and we should have won this title, but oh well. Oh well. I mean, we've still got the FA Cup. Imagine if we do win this 8-0. That would be ridiculous. Unless there's going to be a very late rally from Spurs. They've just gone 5-1 down. They've just gone 5-1 down. Uh, that's not that's not happening, is it? It would look good for the first, you know, 20 minutes or so when it was 0-0. Uh, but uh, now it's it's very much gone now. Uh, unless they can score six goals in the last ten minutes, or a week can somehow score four and they score five, it's it's not happening. Haaland's in to make it five, and he does. Hat-trick for Erling Haaland, his first in the league. He gets himself 32 goals. He's, he's well out of it for the golden boot, by the way. We've not talked about that. We'll look at that after the game. Um, he's doing very well overall, but in terms of the Premier League... Um, he's not even close. Callum Wilson, at the age of 31, is um, he's he's well into 30 goals in the league alone. Well, a 5-0 win on the final day isn't bad, but unfortunately Liverpool scored five goals as well, and we needed them to really score none. So, I mean, yep, it's uh, it's a shame, it's a shame, but they're just really good really good i i cannot explain what happened in april it makes no sense to me whatsoever but there we are liverpool win the league 92 points we finish on 90 points and we're only second again yep here we are erling Haaland, 23 goals only gets second callum wilson got 34 in 34 a goal a game he's 31 he still only has four caps for England. He's 31. He's scored 34 goals. Haaland, though, wins Young Player of the Year, which, yep, fair enough. Golden Glove this season goes to Alisson. Donnarumma conceded one goal more. But we win Manager of the Year, apparently. I, did, I mean, we, despite finishing second, which I guess goes a long way to say how, you know, how good we've been and how kind of unfair this might be, maybe. Team of the year, Haaland, obviously. Chilwell is in there, despite losing his place in the final month. Otherwise, dominated by Liverpool, uh, plus Bruno Fernandes, and of course, Callum Wilson, obviously. I mean, we've been through this, but just the amount of games that we've won this season, and yet we've not won the league, is just because of this month. This collapse, which is inexplicable. And, it, well, it is, it is, you can explain it. Basically, this guy here, with his injury time winner for West Ham has cost us the league he, he he has cost us the league so so thanks very much Nadim Bajrami I really appreciate it and I will hate you irrationally forever
But that's not all, we can still end the year on a high by winning a trophy as we will play Manchester United at Wembley. And I'm thinking actually we'll probably keep the team the same. hudson Odoi's done well, but Depay played really well against Cardiff, so he deserves to keep his place. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe Chilwell, but Emerson's recent form has been so good. I think, I think Emerson gets to keep his place for the cup final. So can we do it? Obviously, we played Man United a lot of times with last episode three. I'm quite sick of them, but this is the last one for sure. Can we can we do what we couldn't do last time out and actually beat them to win a piece of silverware, win the FA Cup again and cap off the season and the save? Well, 26 minutes in and you've missed nothing. This is the first highlight. Harry Maguire's booted the ball to Marcus Rashford. They're in behind. Again, we're getting back, trying to stop them. Rhys James, has, has he given away a penalty? I mean, we've got form, haven't we? We've got form. Uh, yep, yeah, he's given it. He's given it. Um, brilliant. Fantastic. Really, really good start. First thing we've seen all game, Bruno Fernandes steps up and he sends Donnarumma in the wrong, wrong way. And they've got a corner now. It could be could be worse. Uh, it nearly is. Mason Greenwood hits the crossbar. Right, no sense waiting. We're not doing much. We're going for it. We'll go attacking. We'll keep the formation the same for now, but we'll go attacking. Uh, it's achieved nothing in the first half. 1-0 uh, to Manchester United. I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen from the team. I, mean, I know we didn't win the league, but we got a chance to win something here. And everyone's playing pretty terribly. Kante on a 6.3. Tamori, the hero of last year's final, on a 6.4. Finally, we've got a highlight for ourselves. Ziyech with a corner in, knocked away by Wambasaka, but he gets it straight back. Puts it in, cleared again by Pogba. But only as far as Bastoni, who's hit... The ball that Kovacic has managed to stop Martinez from breaking away. I mean, is this actually our highlight? Are we going to do anything? Are we going to actually attempt to score a goal? Or will we suddenly become terrible again after, you know, everything that's happened? Uh, Reese James across. It's gone in. Is this going to count? I don't think that really should count. I don't really care, but it, um, uh, cool, great. Mason Mount. It does indeed count from Mason Mount. Uh, Rhys James atones for his penalty error, puts it across. De Gea, he was on the ball. He must. I don't know how he's managed to let go of that, but Mason Mount picks up the spilled ball and we're back on level terms. We've got another corner. The last one did result in things. Ziyech across, cleared again by Pogba. He gets another go at it, though. And can he find anyone? He finds Memphis Dubai, who slams it home. He has scored at least one goal in the save against Man United, I, I seem to recall. But none are going to be more sweet than that. Ziyech, two goes at it. And this time, he finds someone to just smash the ball past De Gea. Memphis Depay, against his old club, gives us the lead at Wembley. Five minutes of normal time remaining. People are tired, but I kind of want to just leave them out there. And, um, you know, just see how it goes. Kovacic has lost to Martial. Oh, Maybe, maybe we should have made some changes then, clearly. It's just like every game we play against Man United just ends with them scoring in the final minute. Martinez, it's a brilliant save from Donnarumma. I bought Christensen off of Kovacic, who wasn't playing especially well, but the time is running out. The time has gone, and we have come from behind to beat Man United, and at least we've won the FA Cup, which is at the, the least we deserve from what's been a fantastic season. But once again, just not as good as Liverpool. So there we go. There we go. The FA Cup might not be what we set out for. I did play a fully rotated side in every single round to try and get knocked out. But they went, managed to get through. We didn't get knocked out. We've made it all the way to the final. And it ends up being the only thing we win all season other than the Community Shield. But it's a double of sorts. And there as we go off down the pitch, Erling Haaland doing a cartwheel to celebrate, which... We love to see. That is uh, that's going to be that. That is going to be that for the season. That is going to be that for the save. At least in a regular sense. Congratulations, boys. You deserve to celebrate, even if you did kind of choke the league pretty badly. Yeah, look, the game the game's calling it a double, so we will too. Um, yeah, the board are pleased. We're all pleased, and um, I mean, I'm not. I'm not pleased. I am annoyed because we sh we should have we should have won the league, shouldn't we? We should have won the league, but you can't win them all, and at least we won something. So there we are. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Thank you very much for watching the save. This is, as I said, going to be the final regular episode. We may still be back. I may still carry on playing the save um, season four onwards. I want to try and win the league, of course, 
and then we'll do a video just sort of seasonal review type thing but it will definitely be the final episode of this as a regular save I think I love managing Chelsea of course I support them I love managing big clubs but for all the reward the potential of, of titles and, and and trophies all the time that comes with you know it's kind of it's, it's just constantly intense the amount of games that you play the we we've basically other than the fact that we didn't make the Champions League final at any point um, I mean, like this season, we have played every single game we could have played, except for the Champions League final and the Super Cup at the start. Otherwise, it's been an absolutely full campaign. Three years of pretty much non-stop football is it's draining. And when there's so many high-stakes games, you want to just record them all. You want to have them in an episode, and it kind of just there's a lot. There's a lot. You kind of you're always competing for something, and every game is important. And every time you drop points, it ends up proving incredibly critical. But we've had some good times. The two FA Cup wins, obviously very, very good. Some some brilliant individual performances and matches. Uh, some bad times, obviously the collapse this season. And of course, probably my crowning achievement, the wonderful 4-0 defeat to Lazio when we were 5-1 up, ending up being knocked out of the Champions League back in Season 1. Absolute stars of the save. Well, Erling Haaland, we've only had him for one year, but what a year it has been from him. Only I mean, 23 goals in the league. It's his best season Maybe would have had a bit more from him, but he's played so much football. 32 overall. It has been very good indeed. Uh, Depay, I've enjoyed. I think he's been very good. Ziyech as well, not the most consistent. Also, Lini, he's kind of trailed off towards the end of the season, but he's done really well this season. Kai Havertz has just been uh, kind of an enigma of the save. He, the season one, he was dreadful, really poor. Uh, improved as he went on. He started off this season absolutely un- you know, undroppable. He was fantastic. He, he's well, He's been dropped since... Uh, since last episode, and we haven't missed him at all. Ben Chilwell has been brilliant uh, throughout for the most part. Tammy Abraham's done pretty well as well. Uh, Kovacic, always reliable when called upon. Kante is Kante. You can't go wrong with him. And Mason Mount as well, just so solid. The, the stars for me, though, really have been Bastoni, Tamori, and James. James has been fantastic. But the, these two boys here, Tamori, who I wasn't sure at the start of the save who I wanted to be my first choice centre-back pairing. Obviously, in real life, Frank Lampard has basically cast him out from the squad. He is fifth choice now. He is probably going to go out on loan in January. I have no idea why. He is vastly superior to Andreas Christensen, vastly superior to Antonio Rudiger, and um, certainly has better ball-playing skills than Kurt Zuma, although I do think Kurt Zuma is very, very good. Um, Yeah, he's been the best player of the save, I think, overall. Just so dependable, so reliable, the average ratings certainly reflect that. Obviously, this, the, the, for me, the best perf- individual performance of the entire save was him in the FA Cup final against Liverpool last year. He was injured, we'd given him an injection, and he was an absolute rock at the back, w- pretty much single-handedly winning us that game with some incredible clearing headers, tackles, and passes. There's the final record, 177 games played with a win percentage of 70%. Which, that's not bad, is it? That's not bad. So there we are. That is where we will leave things, at least from a regular point of view. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, make sure you leave a like on this video as well. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Because, uh, well, we're going to take the weekend off. But we will be back next week for our next challenge. Which, if I haven't mentioned already, I have mentioned it in some videos very briefly. We will be taking charge of Norwich City. Of course, relegated from the Premier League last season. And we will be seeing, first of all, if we can get them back, if we can bounce back into the Premier League, and then how well we can do with them with a policy going forwards of only being able to sign British and Irish players in order to just make sure we don't ever have to worry about work permits as a result of Brexit whatsoever. So that is the challenge we're going to see. If we can do that, we'll see how well we can do over a long period of time. I hope you can join me for that too. Uh, We will also be starting a a revival of something I did a couple of years ago, which you may have seen, of International Journeyman, which will be a different style of videos, more uh, post-recorded style, more heavily edited style, as we try and win all the major international tournaments. That won't be up for a while, but watch out for that coming relatively soon. And yeah, all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.